Hello, friends. How are you today? Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Cecile, good morning to you. Hope you're feeling great. Uh, it is a beautiful day. Uh, not a lot of sun, but a little cloudy and cool. It is a nice day to be out. So uh, glad that you're with us. It, it, yes, all right. We're, we're, good morning, Kristen. Yes, you've got it. You, you win a cookie. You're on board. Good morning, morning, Sharon. Glad you're here. Deb Votrin, good morning to you. So, how are you, friends? Don't worry. <laughs> you're, you're welcome to come by, gang. Thank you. <laughs> All right, it's... Hello, friends. Good morning, Donna. How are you this morning? Glad you're here. Not everybody's finding your way. It is a beautiful view. Let's see if we can get a little more there. Let's see what we can do. I am on the sidewalk, so we may, we may have we may have visitors today. It'll be great. So. Welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome. Hi everyone, great to see you. Good to see you. Good morning, John, glad you're here. Good morning, everybody. It is, we're gonna get going here. Uh, so welcome uh, this morning. It is the fourth day of August uh, at 2021 at 11.11. And I am glad that you're here with us, uh, that you're part of this continued live stream journey uh, through our world and our life, that we are, uh, that we are people together uh, in, this, in this journey. And we want to talk about this. Hey, good morning, Gary. Glad you're here. That, uh, and, and that uh, if, uh, for those of us who are, uh, who are connected to Fall River, this day of the fourth day of August is uh, in, an infamous day in town. That 18, in 1892, 139 years ago, at just about this time, 1115, the record shows, so it is 1113 now, that uh, at almost this time, a couple of blocks over from here, uh, a, uh, a woman, a 32-year-old woman by the name of Lizzie Borden went into her house. Uh, and uh, as she tells the story, she discovered that both her father and mother had been brutally murdered. Uh, that uh, the great, uh, and, and this, this horrific murder would go on to inform and uh, capture the zeitgeist and the attention, not just of this city, but of uh, people everywhere, uh, even to this day. Uh, there have been, there have been any number uh, you name it in terms of what could possibly have been created as a work of art around a mass murder, and it's been done. There is a Lizzie Borden musical. There's Lizzie Borden on ice. There's Lizzie Borden. Uh, uh, there, you can go stay at the Lizzie Borden house. You can. There are, there's Lizzie Borden paintings. There's that that this whole encounter uh, of of her life and her life here in Fall River uh, has, has been a spectacle now for 139 years. Uh, you know, even, and uh, I'll, you know, kids uh, far and wide could even learn the, the old nursery rhyme of, you know, of, uh, you know, Lizzie Borden took an ax and gave her mother 40 wax. That, uh, 
and then so and and that that uh, and and so I want to what I want to talk a little bit a little bit about is first this church behind me because this is her church um, and this interestingly it was not her father's church they that her father actually had started out life at our church first congregational church uh, Andrew Andrew Borden and then came to first congregational church or uh, central congregational church this church right here and then late but later in life returned to first congregational church so at the time of the murder actually Andrew was worshiping at First Congregational Church. Now, he wasn't worshiping at First Congregational Church in Rock Street because it hadn't been built yet. He was actually worshiping at the Stone Church down with the Old Stone Church, which was the original church of our congregation, which is now where the CVS is down across from uh, Portugalia. So there you go. That's where Central used to be. So we are in this place uh, today because I, I, I have been fascinated by the simple fact that uh, we're still fascinated by by Lizzie and by this by that and that the world still has some fascination with it that somehow we're you know we we still just don't want to look away when we kind of come by the accident you know that that kind of our our gee gawking rubbernecking kind of instinct to look into the darkness and the way that this uh, captured it and and I want to start that because uh, and I, I want to start right like actually at 139 years ago that what happened here at this church right here central congregational this building right here you can go inside there and there's actually her pew that they they actually identified where she used to sit the congregation here when uh, she was accused was radically supportive reverend judd who was the newly called pastor he'd just been there less than a year you know that that's that's a good time uh rallied around her and spoke from spoke in open support to uh, of lizzie from the pulpit uh her the 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 group of the young persons group that she was a part of uh uh held and believed that she was a uh uh, uh, sent her flowers with a note that said that uh, said how much they supported and loved her and was sure that this this uh, this was just going to be uh, a, a stern of her anytime uh, the her old pastor who was the one that really brought her to faith Reverend Buck now fun thing about Reverend Buck Reverend Buck was a uh, he actually comes from Maine. He's actually a Mainer. He spent and he spent uh, moved to Fall River. And spent most of his life then in Fall River, but but grew up in Maine. Was ordained in Maine. Uh, came from uh, came from Bucksport, Maine. And uh, uh, actually, his parent, his grandparents were one of the original founders. So, and he, but he, by the 1840s, he had found him his way to Fall River. Uh, he he had to be visiting the town and found out that they had a uh, that the the church had an opening and uh, submitted his his. his uh, and uh, received a call, and and he was really the storied pastor there. He would be the he would come on. He would go along to do the funeral for Andrew and uh, his wife, and they would. Uh, um, and he would he was a regular visitor of Lizzie's, even uh, onward, and regular supporter. That those who knew her closely, and that those who, and then after she is acquitted, she goes to this church once, once. And no one has ever recorded or knows what exactly happened on that day. So, uh, but uh, on when she returned to church, but it is, but there is, there was some disconnect, something, whether it was the, uh, whether it was the church, whether it was Lizzie, that that is lost to history, um, and people, lots of people have uh, have have you know, kind of thought about that, but but no one knows. But the outward uh, expression of the church has always was always great support of her uh, and, and her innocence. 140 years later, we're, we still look at this and we still rubberneck and we still geegawk and we still wonder about the horrific murder that happened over on School Street uh, uh, some years ago, or Second Street rather, some years ago. And um, and so I, I want to, that I, I set all of that up to, to actually come to this building itself, which is, is truly fantastic. Um, and that right over here, right over here, let me get it right, 
uh, on the there are words on the church itself right there, and they are the the ancient the ancient biblical words of seek the Lord while he may be found. We have this macabre sense uh, sometimes, you know. We will look uh, at the difficult and the hard in life. We'll look to the darkness. Uh, we'll look to difficulty. Uh, we'll look to the. We'll we'll not look away from the auto accident as we slowly roll by. Uh, there's this way, and and in the same way, we will not turn away from from uh, our from the the macabre things of our life and the difficult things of this life. That and and Lizzie Borden is another case of that. That every, as I said, every opportunity to make some sort of art around uh, this gruesome murder, and and why? Why is this? Why is this captured such imagination for so long? Why was it? Why was her new home uh, a uh, a place of scorn? Why was she often? Uh, 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 um, isolated in the in Fall River itself, you know, uh, anything that happens later in her life can well be attributed simply to the fact that uh, um, that uh, the the way in which uh, she was kind of made a social pariah as time went on. Now, what I want to what I, I want to come back to the very lesson of, of this building, this notion that we might seek the Lord when. He may be found. That we look to the macabre a lot. We'll look to the darkness. We'll look to the 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 awful. We'll look to the ugly. We'll look to the we'll look to the darkness. The darkness has you know has a compelling sense to it in, in its own, and and this story has is an example of that. But I think, and I think one of the things that was so compelling about about her story. Is because she was really considered, particularly in the late 19th century, truly what every woman should be, truly the the flower of innocence in a lot of ways, and that this that that this horror might coexist with such beauty, really that that was found in in Lizzie's life, that that it was there was so much tension that it continues to live on today, and I believe that is what we we look to when we don't quite look away from the auto accident or when we spend a little too much time on the, on the macabre or the, or the dangerous, is that we are encountering this sense of the, the differing states of life, the, the darkness and the light, the horror and the beauty, and that there's this way that, that in the world that we live, in the world that we understand, that the light without darkness doesn't really work, and that the darkness without light is nothing but lo but loss. And that when we see them so close together, when we see horror and when we see kind of virtue and beauty and, and closely inhabited, it will always attract our attention. And so my invitation to you is, is to, is to Look at is to is to step into your own life for a moment. It, it to, is to, to is to to see the thing that makes you look at Lizzie Borden's story and still be mildly interested if you are, and to see what it is that where the beauty and where the horror of your life uh, might live closely, might inhabit each other. You know. What we we come to maybe you and, and I think this is a lived thing. I don't think this is a I, I don't you know we're we're talking about it as a, a, in, a in terms of a hundred and forty year old murder mystery, which you know we all love mysteries and we all love how this how things you know how are, what what is really true and we all love the the grinding into that. But I real I believe the real fascination here is this 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 the closeness of the dark and the light that we see in Lizzie Borden's story. And so my invitation to you is to look at the places in the story to, as the building tells us, seek the Lord where he may be found. It says it right there. If you're ever walking by, you should check it out. Because 
my suggestion to you in the hardest places in your life, in the darkest moments of your days, in the places where the horror was most manifest and most real, those might very well be the places where the Lord shows up for you, where God's grace has, has found its way into the realm of the dark. That where, you're, where the one who loves you comes to shine the brightest, where the darkness is most encroaching. We want to, we're fascinated with the dark because so often we want to push it away. We're fascinated with the mystery of it because it's just neat, like who, who, who actually did it? That we're fascinated with the, with the horror of it in the, in the great uh, uh, um, apocalypse now, oh, the horror, you know, the, that kind of motion, that, that kind of idea. But I would submit to you, we are most fascinated by it because in those places of real horror and real darkness are also the places that the light shows up most profoundly, where the light shines most distinctly. And I want to invite you today to, to take Lizzie Borden Day here in Fall River. Uh, the, I think the, the, the house is open. I think there, are, there may be, I think there's an event maybe at, at, uh, the, at the, her grave site. I, to take this and, and just turn this, turn our fascination outward uh, to this dark and light mystery before us and seek the Lord where he may be found in that place of darkness and light. Where, when you were hurting, when you were broken, when you were scared, anybody scared over these past years? Where you're concerned, where you're uncertain, where the darkness and the, and the creatures of, of night seem to be crawling up into your being? Look for the light. And, what you just, and, and that, it, that, that the, the darkness will serve only to find, to, to find more and more and more ways that we might better know it and better understand it and better embrace God's love for us. We can appreciate the beauty of these days. Like Cecile said when we started, it's just a beautiful day. It is because it's not even, it's a, it's a little overcast, but it is this, uh, it is not, uh, it's not hot. It's not humid. Uh, there's this, there's, it's comfortable there. And yet in the beauty of these days, we can appreciate the beauty and we can feel good about it, but, but it doesn't have the spark. It doesn't have the power. It doesn't have the draw. The beauty of this day will not endure 130 years from now with people talking about, you know, that was a really beautiful day. But they will, people still talk about the horror that happened and, uh, that was discovered at 1115 on this day right now and the mystery and the wonder around it and the, and the close habitation of horror and beauty of dark and light. I want to invite you to, to let this day not just be a historical day, but let it be a personal one. Let it be a personal one. The places where you've you've encountered your darkness as of re, as in the in in these near days. The places where you've you've encountered your struggles. The places where you've encountered where you feel like all the goodness in your life just got whacked in the head with an axe that those moments, those times, those, look for the light. Search for the Lord where he may be found. Look for the, the shining of the grace of God in you and for you and around you. Because I believe, it's, I, I believe that our fascination of looking into the darkness, our, our, our draw to the abyss is quite truly actually our deep searching for the light that will be made manifest in the midst of it in the overcoming of the darkness and in the breaking of the chain of violence and horror and that, that this world might be a part of. Because that's the beauty and that's the promise. So I invite you to say a prayer for the, the 139 year old victims of Andrew and his wife. Say a prayer for Lizzie and her, her, her uh, lost and and, uh, and fascinating life, but also invite God into, the, into your own dark place. Invite God into that place that would catch your eye in your own soul or in your own experience or in your own days 
and see what light might shine. Seek, as our building tells us here, seek the Lord where he may be found. Let that go and let that shine. And in the midst of this, I think this day of 139 years of history here in Fall River might take on a whole new meaning and a whole new depth about why we still care about this long and ancient story. All right, friends, that's my hope for you today. Uh, you know, get out and do some do some Lizzie Borden stuff. Um, I hope you find some joy in this. Uh, if you ever get a chance to explore this building behind me, do so. It, it is really a, it is really a, a, a gothic treasure. Uh, with all of this, though, I am going to be gone for the next two weeks. I am uh, I will be on vacation, and we will pick up 11:11 on the 19th on Thursday of, of August. Uh, I, it is my hope you have a chance to have some uh, some Sabbath time in this. Thank you, Sharon that uh, um, that you have an opportunity to to, uh, to take a knee as well and that we'll be back in a few weeks with another 1111 uh, and enjoy your day friends peace and grace